Hi, this is Rosalind Carson. Short little video here to show you the easiest way to discover the sine and cosine law. You know what's slick about these? You don't need them for trig identities. However, students love sine law, more so than cosine law. Sine law because you can use that to solve missing sides and angles in any triangle, right or non-right, it doesn't matter. So I find once students discover the sign law, they're like, why don't we just use this for everything? Well, you know what, you can. So I love showing it to students, whether it's in the curriculum or not. It's super simple. You could even do this in grade 10 if you wanted. There are students who use it from grade 10 on. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Anyways. Uh, there's two ways I'm going to show you how to use sine and cosine law to generate the trig identities, but I also want to show you how to generate all the trig identities without them. <clears throat> so this video is just to show you how easy it is to discover these using our same circle visual, uh, not the circle, sorry, our same <laughs> visual of opposite equals hypotenuse times sine, adjacent is hypotenuse times cosine. All right, here we go. So I want you to draw any triangle. <laughs> this is funny to me as a teacher. I find it difficult to draw a triangle that's not a special triangle, equilateral, isosceles, or right, or isosceles right. It's very funny to me that it's actually challenging to me to draw a scaling that doesn't fit any of those other criteria. Now, Tully's, our ancient mathematician, who is our first recorded mathematician in history of math, he's, this is one of his properties. You can take any triangle and split it into two right triangles. Now, I actually had classroom debates with grade 10 students who didn't believe that maybe you could split every single triangle into two right triangles. So they would come up to the whiteboard and we had a drawing challenge just even for five minutes to see, can you create a triangle where you can't split it into two right triangles? It was hilarious. So see, you can have a debate in math class about anything, even this simple property. All right, so get your students to draw any triangle, any triangle at all. It can be special if they want. We're gonna split it into two right triangles. We call this the altitude in a triangle because when I split it, I'm dropping one, from one vertex a line that's perpendicular to the other side in the triangle. Now, when I label my triangle, traditionally we use little letters to mark the line segments for the edges, and then we use capital letters that correspond to those opposite side lengths. This is why. And you know, this is a good discussion to have with your students. Angle C, the reason it has to be opposite side C for labeling is because there's a special relationship there. Angle C is an a, a measure of movement. Degrees is a measure of movement. The movement is from side length B to side length A. I'm saying, how far am I swinging over? And when I swing that specific distance from side length A to side length B, I'm creating a specific line segment C. Triangle is literally three angle movements that create this three-sided polygon. Angle A is a specific angle of movement. It's a specific measure of movement that creates that exact line segment length A. That's why we label corresponding sides to opposite angles with the same letter. We just use one as a little letter, little letter and one as a capital letter. Okay, so now we wanna label that line that cut the triangle into two right triangles. That's our altitude. But we want to use our opposite equals hypotenuse times sine. So from looking at angle C, this is why, again, it's great to define sine as the half chord length generated from that angle of movement C. So when I'm traveling that distance C, which is an angle movement, I've created a half chord length, which is that blue line. And that is equal to the hypotenuse times sine of that chord length, half chord length. So when I label that, I'll label that side, that is the opposite side in that new little triangle, and it is hypotenuse times sine of that movement. That's the half chord length generated from that sweeping movement angle C. There it is. Now, if I want to label the other side length beside angle C, that's the adjacent side. Again, I know that's the distance from that angle C, that vertex. It's the distance from the center, the distance from that vertex to that half chord length. That's hypotenuse times cosine. There it is. Hypotenuse times cosine is the measurement of that distance from that vertex to that half chord length. We're keeping with the same terminology, the same definition, the same visual. Now, what does everyone want to do when they see a right angle triangle? They want to apply the Babylonian theorem. I've been saying that for like 20 years because uh, when I was in university, 
I took a history of math course from Dr. Guy. He's at the University of Calgary. He's over 100 years old right now. And he showed us how on the Plimpton 322 stone tablet, the Babylonians had discovered this Pythagorean triple um, relationship thousands of years before Pythagoras. And when you read the history of math, Pythagoras was a student of Tali's. And Tali said, hey, Pythagoras, take your uncle's money and go st study in Babylon. So we don't know who discovered this relationship first, but it's like publish or perish. The name Pythagoras stuck. Hard to change it now. So anyways, students want to apply the Pythagorean theorem or the Babylonian theorem. Or the Chinese theorem. The Chinese had it too. Oh, whatever you want to call it. So let them try it. I love having students just try it. This is what mathematicians do. They see something. Mm, I can apply some kind of formula here. Let's play around and see what happens. Students will notice they apply the Pythagorean theorem. They just get that Pythagorean identity that we already discovered when we were generating the sine and cosine values around the circle so nothing too interesting here okay well let's look at the other triangle then uh, i've already got the hypot or the altitude labeled there as hypotenuse times sine a times sine c let's look at that other leg in the other triangle okay so if students play around and label that adjacent side with a like the adjacent side to a they'll find they don't come up with an interesting relationship between sine and cosine yet we're looking for a relationship between sine and cosine other than the pythagorean identity because we already have the Pythagorean identity. So why not look for some other relationship? And if I want a relationship between sine and cosine, I need to use the same angle measurement. So I want to label that remaining leg on the bottom in relation to angle C. The one way to do that is like this. I want to label that leg in relation to angle C so that I can generate some equation with sine and cosine. Well, I can take that whole side length B and subtract A cosine C. So I can label it with relation to angle C still, and now I've got it labeled in terms of cosine. All right, so let's do what we naturally want to do. We see a right angle triangle. We apply Babylonian theorem or Pythagorean theorem. Okay, here we go. Set it up, Pythagorean theorem, we got the hypotenuse is c squared, square the other two legs, simplifies to the cosine law. This is really interesting for students to analyze because they can see Pythagorean theorem in this formula. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And we have this bit of this measurement error added on to the end. So if my triangle is not a right triangle, if it's a right triangle, Cosine of 90 degrees, let's think about this, cosine of 90 degrees is zero. That 2AB cosine C turns to zero. So if I apply this cosine law in a right triangle, that measurement error disappears and we just get Pythagorean theorem. So if my triangle's not a right triangle, all of a sudden the measurement either increases or decreases based on that angle C measurement. So if cosine is bigger than 90 degrees, it becomes a negative value. So we add on some measurement. If cosine C is less than 90 degrees, it's positive. Positive times a negative is a negative. So we end up subtracting a bit of a measurement in there. This is very interesting. So have your students play with the legs of the triangle, making C either 90, bigger than 90, less than 90. What happens to that cosine value? And what happens to the whole formula? You see, basically we have Pythagorean theorem and then we're stretching the triangle to be an angle bigger than 90. And we can adjust the Pythagorean theorem with this measurement error. We've either added area to the triangle or we've decreased. Very interesting. Okay. Let's just take any triangle. Draw any triangle. It can be a special triangle or non-special. I try to do scaling. I want to divide it into two right triangles, just like Tali said we could. I want to label the sides and the angles. A, B, C boring but there it is I'm going to label the corresponding opposite angle that generated those side lengths a and b as capital a capital b because angle a generated that side length a angle b generated that side length b okay now I want to label that altitude coming at it from both those angles so if I'm looking at angle b that half chord length that's generated is hypotenuse times sine of that movement so it's a times sine b if I'm looking at it from angle A, that sweeping movement generated a half chord length that's hypotenuse times sine of that movement, so it's B times sine A. 
That is the same sign. So that's the same line segment length. Therefore, we're basically done. Once we've got this, we've got the sign law, and we can set this up any way you want. You can draw in an altitude from any vertex in the triangle, flip it around. You get sign law, sign law, sign law, and then you can show students how they can use this relationship in any triangle. And this is where I find students just love sign law. All right, so have a little fun with that. This is just a short video on sine and cosine law. I love this visual for it. It's super easy to generate. And uh, stay tuned for the next video where we are generating the rest of our trig identities.